This is another in the first read series where I just read a poem by a poet I don't know or know very little about, just for the sheer joy of it, that kind of reason you get into poetry in the first place. I think as a viewer, maybe the only reason to watch this is to disagree with me here. I don't know, maybe have some insight, I'm not sure. Or just find another poet you don't know. Um, I think that's kind of how it works. Look at this one. I'm looking at word for word. This is the summer 2022 edition. And I don't usually call out other poets, but I just looking at this one, um, I usually just get straight to the poem. There is a piece by David Baptiste Chirot, and if you haven't seen his work, you should look at it. It's fabulous. He died not long ago, but these, uh, these sketchings are from the streets of Milwaukee. Anyway, going on to somebody else. So, somebody I don't know, so I know a lot of the visual poets here, so just looking at this list, um, there are a lot of great ones here. I don't know Danny Storm, so I'm going to click on this one. I picked these pieces for this series randomly, so I'm doing the same thing here. Uh, look at this one. Uh, they're just sort of shapes. Start with this. I'm just going to read this first one. AE01. So look at this. And, you know, if you've seen any of these other videos, you probably know that I look at the form first for any point I look at. And you know this one. I don't have to worry about traditional elements. It's vis, po, visual poetry. Um, so I'm just going to look at the piece itself. Uh, looking at it, it looks like it was done with a typewriter, not with a computer, because of the variation in the strength of the ink. Uh, that's something that's kind of natural with the typewriter. Also, the alignment is a little bit off in the little section. You can see some white in here. Um, I like that. I mean, this is maybe just my penchant for typewriters. But I like this. I think it kind of gives it a visual element that sucks you in a little bit, that if it were more consistent, it wouldn't, but I feel like now, even like the harsh, the harshness of the ink down here, it pulls your eye to it and you can look for it. I think, you know, it's like looking at, looking for shapes in the clouds a little bit. You can do that with a piece when it does like this. In itself, I mean, it's a triangle. It's a kind of classic shape. I mean, I don't know if this is supposed to be a pyramid or trying just a triangle itself, which is kind of, you know, the pyramid theme is evocative. It is A-E all the way through it. Um, you know, I'll zoom in a little bit here, AE. That actually looks like the AE, the single letter, which is called an ash, which we don't use in English anymore. I don't know if that was intentional to have an ash. I think that sometimes the British still use it, but in, in the US, we never use the, a, the AE. I think a lot of Americans don't even understand what it looks like. We, do, we still have the sound, we just don't use the letter, which is maybe unfortunate. But we have this pile of AE, it's just like the discarded letter that uh, we don't use anymore in this giant pile? Or is it supposed to be red, you know, as the whole bunch of ash sounds? I'm not going to do that here because uh, that would just be awkward, but I think it would be fun to listen to this, this poet read this piece. This just sound is a visual and a sound piece because of this. And I think this is kind of piece that you may leave yourself with a question of like, you know, is this a poem or not? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, it's a, a small shape created all out of out of uh, letters, and it's very condensed. It's condensed down to one sound. I think that's how, how a lot of people define poem, like, like meaning condensed as much as you can. Well, here it is, just a single sound. I think this does, you know, to my eye, connect to the Viz, Vizpo tradition that's pretty strong at this point. I would say it's not as strong in the U.S. as it is in other places, maybe getting there. And if you look back at the 20th century, it looked to places like, uh, you know, like in several European countries like France and Italy, but also places like uh, Brazil or Argentina. They have these fairly strong uh, traditions of this. I think it kind of ties into that. I think it would feel like it fits pretty well with inside some of those conversations happening around it. So... You know, if you look at it, you're like, is it a poem or not? It's up to you. I, I am totally fine with this as it is. I kind of think it's asking me to do what a poem is asking me to do, which is get sucked in, take a look at it, take a look at it on a line level. Like, for example, like, why is this line a little bit stronger than the other lines? Why is there spacing here? Am I supposed to see something? Is it? What am I supposed to get out of it? How is it supposed to make me feel? Um, all these like traditional things, you know, like we would do as a you know, literary critics, read a response. What does it make you do? You know, like psychologically, how does it impact you? Um, but I, I think even like, you know, just 
organically? How does it fit together? How are all the pieces there? How are they all on purpose the way they are? So anyway, Danny Storm, yeah, interesting little piece. Uh, I find it interesting, so uh, you know, maybe check out Danny Storm's work.